Hello, Hardware Thrift here, and today in our LabVIEW introductory course, our lesson is on case structures. So if you've never used case structure in LabVIEW before, in traditional programming, they're like your if statements. Basically, you can have different conditions that when a certain value is inputted or a certain condition is inputted, it can change the output of that value. And I'll show you when we get into it. So we're going to start over in our block diagram. We're going to right click, go into our structures, and pull out a case structure. So this case structure, when we pull it out, we're going to notice a few things about it. Whatever the output is or whatever the function you want operated must be inside the case structure. But if you notice, if I come up to this tab, the case structure has two different states. It has a true and a false. That you can switch between those states depending on what your input into your uh, case structure is. So since it's true or false, we know we have a boolean input, so we're just going to put, let's just say, a toggle switch in there. So if we take our toggle switch, we hook it up, if we can grab one of these nodes, we're going to hook it up to our case structure, and so now if we toggle in between it, we can toggle either our true or false statement. Next thing you want to do is you want some kind of output when each of those are toggled. So let's say I want to have a number come out of this. So we're going to put in a oops, we're going to put in a numeric indicator. We're going to pull that outside of our case structure. So what's going to happen is here we're going to go in. We're going to create a constant we're going to pull that constant into our case structure and then we're going to copy that and then we're going to go to our false state we're going to put that constant into the false state also and hook it up to our numeric if you noticed when it is unhooked in one of the states so you'll see that it is unhooked in a state in our false state our constant is hooked up and in our true state it is no longer hooked up and our program is broken that means we cannot run it but once we hook it up again our program is ready to run so we're going to change the number inside this we're going to change that to a 1 for the true state and a 0 for the false state so when we run this oop, we're going to run continuously when we run this if it's in the true state so the lever up we're in the true and it's going to show 1 and when the lever down it's going to show 0 so that means whatever input you're giving this case structure it will flip between these two states depending on what you want your output to be and the good thing about this is if we pause it this can't it's not just uh, let's break that line it's not just booleans that this can take it can take a numeric input so you can put a numeric control in there and you can hook that up to our controller and what that'll give us now is 0 and 1 so you'll notice this time it's a little different in our 0 case we have something called a default because what happens is if I go in here and run our program and let's say we have cases 0 and 1 and I input a 2 and try to run that it'll automatically default to back to our zero state. So what's going to be outputted is our zero. So that's basically like an if else and then an if else statement is the best way to put it because if it is one, it'll run this. If else it is zero, it will run this. And else, so any other variables in there, it will default back to our zero answer being popped out. So now if we want to add more values, we can break the program, we go in, we right click on our little bar up there, and we can add case after. So what this add case after means is now we have case 0, 1, and 2. And you can keep doing that for as many enumerations as you want. And then anything that can take a value, so we can plug up we can plug in a numeric, we can plug in a string control, we can plug in a, where's our enumeration at? 
we can plug in an enumeration if we want to that and it'll run each of them. So that's the basics of what we can get with a case structure. And I would like to, our next portion is going to be our challenge problem. So we're gonna switch to our challenge problem. And this challenge problem this time is, I'd like you to create a seven segment display which can display numbers zero through nine using a case structure. So this is gonna be a little bit longer of a challenge and I'm probably gonna walk you through step by step. Feel free if you're comfortable with a certain portion to skip ahead as I explain how to do each part. But go ahead and get started and I'll start working on it too. So the first thing we need to know is how can we set up a segment, seven segment display. I'm gonna be running mine using these booleans or these LEDs right here. They each take a true or false statement to turn them on and off. And so before we can just dive in and start trying to code this, we need to know which each, le which each letters corresponds to. And I made this handy dandy Excel sheet to show you how we can run this seven segment display. So over here is our example of the seven segment display. Each LED is broken up into A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And that'll show you like your scoreboard display. Now to turn on certain letters, we need to set up a truth table on what needs to be true and what needs to be false. So like this one showing right here, if we would like this to show zero, if we'd like this to show zero, it's going to be A, B, C, D, E, and F are true and our G in there is false. So that means we have a zero in there and so on and so forth as we work through the project. So I'm gonna be referencing this as we move through. So first we wanna set up our, our seven segment display. So we're gonna start with our A value. We're gonna move it out and I'm gonna to want to expand this to be a little bit bigger. And then we're gonna take our B and this will be our value that we stick in the corner here and we're going to expand this. It's gonna be a rough seven segment display but it'll show. And then we're gonna go for our G in the corner again. We're gonna make our A a little bit wider. We're gonna pull our B down. We're gonna pull our A over. Pull our G over. Next, we're gonna put our C in. We're gonna pull that down. We're gonna pull our C over so we can still see it. We're gonna take our D. Oop, we grabbed our E in there too. We're gonna grab our D. We're gonna pull it down to that corner. Same thing. Extend it. Our E. And then finally, our F once we're done with this one. Drag that over. And then our F, last but not least. All right, so now you can see we kind of have that scoreboard display set up, but we want to run this so it counts zero to nine. There's some complicated ways we could do it with OR gates, NOT gates, AND gates, just our logics, or we can use a case structure and make it much more simply. Also, as I mentioned before, if this is going a little too slow for you or you're ahead of this, you can speed up through the video to see how where we're actually getting the case structure to work with these. So we have all of our booleans over here lined up and we're going to take our Excel sheet and look again. So when we pull out our case structure, let's see, case structure, we're gonna build that out. And in our case structure, we can't just have two cases because if we're counting between zero and nine, that means there's 10 different ways this can be displayed. So the best thing we can do for hooking this up is we're gonna go in, we're gonna get a numeric control. We're gonna pull that in and we're gonna hook that numeric control up to our display. So now we have zero, one, and we need to go through nine now. So we're gonna click, we're gonna add case after, we have two, add case after, add case after, and then keep adding our cases. 
until we get to nine. So now each one of these will run a certain part of display. And as we know from before, to get our display to run, we need to either light up or turn off these LEDs. And to do that, we're not going to use switches. We're just going to go back to the original way we know it. And we're going to go in and we're going to make some true, we're going to put some true and false constants in. So we're going to get nine of these and copy and paste them into this structure. Four, five, four. That's eight. Oh, wait. I was thinking of what we had before. We actually only need seven because it is our seven segment display. So now each one of these, each one of these will control an LED display. So if it's true, once again, if it's true, it will run that LED, and if it's false, it will turn off that LED. So this portion is going to be a little bit slow, because now what we need to do is program these to run this display. So we're in set zero right now, so if we type in a zero, it will change to this case. And so if we want this to display a zero, A through F are going to be true, and our G is going to be false. So let's hook up got to press on the inside of these so that it changes it to false and then we're going to take lines and run it to each of our displays and if you notice it gives us that broken program again because we have nine other cases we want to fill as of right now if you're understanding what we're doing and you can go ahead feel free I'm not sure if everyone will be at that point at the moment but feel free to jump ahead to see the final result and see how it runs if you're still uncomfortable, I'm going to go through all the cases in this video so you see how I run them and how they work together. So now what we're going to do, we're going to copy we're going to copy all these statements and we're going to go to our next case, which is our one. We're going to paste these back in. And so one, if we remember, one is going to have B and C as true and everything else is false. So we're going to go B is true and C is true. Oh. We're going to go B is true and C is true and we're going to click and make sure everything else is false. And then like we did before, reconnect those lines. So that they are all hooked up. Now we have 0 and 1. We're going to go ahead and switch to 2. We're going to check our Excel sheet again. With 2, we have A and B as true, C as false, D and E as true, F as false, and G as true. So for that one, we're going to copy our signal back in. We have A and B as true. We have C as false. D and E as ooh, missed that. D and E as true. F is false and G is true. And this one is true. So now all of our cases are broken. So I think you guys get the pattern. So right now I'm going to finish this out with all the other statements and I'm going to skip ahead. So when I'm back, you'll be able to see how this is running in real time. I'll be back in a sec. All right. Welcome back. I hope that went well for you. So I have completed all the cases now. So if I just scroll through quickly, you'll see that we no longer have any broken lines and that we have set up all the way through nine. So what's going to happen when I run this is it's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to click up through the numerics and when you read zero on the numeric, we'll read zero on our display over there. So we're going to go into the continuous run mode and we start out, we see zero, one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So some things we can do with this if we want this to be automated. So let's say we want this to automatically show these changes. We can take a for loop, put everything inside a for loop, set the count on our for loop up to 10, and then hook our iterations up into our case structure. So what's going to happen now if I run this, we should, oh, oops, sorry, we got to slow that down a bit. That's a, that's a my bad again. That's why we didn't see anything happen, is because we need to set this to slow itself down a little bit. We'll set that to 200, and then we'll run it again. And you can see that it can actually count up through that, so if we set it to something like 1000, if I can ever get this to click, if we set this to 1000 and we run it again, it'll start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And it'll count up in actual seconds. The reason why it counts up to 9 and stops, if you remember our four loops last week, we, if we set it to 10, that means our iteration counter, since it starts at 0, will input a 0 to a 1 to a 2 and so on and so forth until it reaches 9 and then the for loop will stop. Um, I hope you found this tutorial useful. I hope you know a little bit more about case structures now and how you can use certain components and combine them together to work a little bit better with each other, such as this for loop and case structure in combination. Next week, I'll be working on shift registers, so hope I'll see you then. Have a good one.